to advanced chord theory. All right, so you can find three major chords and three minor chords in any key. They sound pretty good, but that's just six chords. You're going to get sick of them. So here's some more. So let's take a look at our major and our minor chords once again. For all of these shapes, the root is the first note where your first finger starts. The next note played is the fifth in key. The note after that, usually where your pinky is, is the octave. That is the same as the root note, just up. And then after that, on usually the fourth string over from your starting point is the third. We can change the eight to a seven to get major and minor seventh chords. A major seventh is a half step back from the octave. A minor seventh is a whole step back from the octave. We can change the third in key, the third in the chord, that's the fourth string over from the start of the chord. We can move it up or down to get sus two or sus four. Now here's a little tricky. I'm not gonna give you shapes for sus two and sus four. You just have to stay in key. Take for example, the C major chord. Root, fifth, octave, third. We can change our octave to a major seventh as a half step back from the octave to get C major seven. C major, C major seven. For sus chords, we could change the three, there's the three, to a four in key, or to a two in key, and back to a third. That's sus chords. Sus, sus means suspended third, and then the two or four is which one are you moving to? For minor seventh chords, Let's use E minor for example. The seventh is a whole step back from the octave as it is in the minor scale. So you find your octave, move it a whole step down, which means your first finger is going to bar. E minor seven. Now this one is really weird, the dominant seventh shape. Let's go to the D major chord. And dominant seventh essentially means Major chord, minor seventh. You could also think of it as major chord, flat seventh. And what that means is our seventh is gonna be a whole step back instead of a half step back, even though it's based on a major chord. So D major, D dominant seven, tabs being five, seven, five, seven. There's one dominant seventh chord in every key. You can't play the major seventh chord here, it's out of key. Before the minor root, is the dominant seventh. That's true in every key. In every key, the one dominant seventh chord comes before the minor root. Every other seventh chord in key will line up. If it's a major chord, major seventh. Minor chord, minor seventh. Diminished chord, don't worry about it. All right, that last part, that's a lot of information. Here's what I want you to do before moving forward. This could take months or years of practice. It's completely normal. It's just hard, but using your sus chords and your seventh chords, start thinking of them as variants of your major and minor chords. From there, you can start to embellish your major and minor chord progressions with your sevenths and sus chords and even replacing them entirely, replacing your major and uh, minor chords with sus and seventh chords in progressions where you feel like it. I want to give you a quick example of what I mean, and then we'll move on. That's fun. Yeah, so if you can embellish your chords, especially on bar chords, and you feel like you've got a good grip on major chords, minor chords, major seventh, minor seventh, dominant seventh, sus two, sus four, it's a lot. You can wind up with like 23, 24, something like 23 chords in a key that way. 
were probably ready to start playing out of key, tastefully.